Hi, this is Onya Terrell with John Broughton on Retrospectives KC Radio 97.7 FM. Uh, I just want to start by talking about your, your dad. Uh, he obviously had a, a great influence on you on you musically. Tell us a bit about his life in music. Um, yeah, my dad, uh, well, he always plays played music. Uh, we had traditional music in the house from a very early age, but uh, he didn't release his first album till he was probably in his 40s. And he played sort of in sessions and banjo and toured around America and Europe and sort of was uh yeah um always play music but never sort of push put himself out there and then yeah he 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 did and i think he's on his about 10th album now and 73 and still touring the world so wow. <laughs> <laughs> a bit of longevity in it for me <laughs> did he teach you how to play or are you pretty much self-taught um well he he never learned um yeah he was self-taught so he never thought he could teach anyone if you know what I mean mm. so he just always told me to surround myself with music and and um and uh there were times where we'd play tunes and I'd play in sessions with him especially traditional Irish music you know a lot of it isn't taught it's by ear um so like there you there aren't notes or, or things you have to sort of sit in on sessions to learn them you know what I mean yeah so, and he never read music or did any of that so he really taught me to develop my ear rather than go to lessons but because there were so many musicians in and out of our home and in and out of our life like if if someone was there I would ask them how to play a certain chord on a guitar or something and they'd show me or the tin whistle or you know whatever mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so he taught he taught me more i suppose um yeah to to be a good listener because that's actually a really good um really good piece of advice for music probably <laughs> <laughs> so was a career in music yourself always bubbling away there that was that was always the dream um, yeah, I, I suppose I started writing. It's actually really funny. My my mum found a box of like stuff recently from when I was a kid, and I have songs in there from when I was like eight. So <laughs> obviously I was like <laughs> always writing songs. And then when I um, when I was in university in Dublin, I started playing a lot of my own stuff around um, in the singer songwriter scene around there, and then. Um, when I had my first child, I, I stopped. I stopped playing. I, and I think it's mostly because I didn't see a model, you know, I didn't see a model in Ireland um, of women that were playing music with children. Um, there was a lot of young girls and there was a lot of older women, but kind of that middle generation of women, they, I just didn't see them out and about and doing it. So I kind of didn't think that that could be done. But then... I moved to Australia and I met such amazing female musicians that do it all. Mm. <laughs> and it sort of um, kicked me back into gear. Um, yeah, because I had been trying to sort of fill that creative thing with like hundreds of other things. Like when I wasn't playing music, you know, I was like doing every other creative adventure I could think of and nothing ever filled it like the music did. So. I finally just was like, I have to get back to this. <laughs> <laughs> so did you come to Australia with any plan or preconceived notion of what, what, what to expect here? No, I didn't even bring a guitar, actually, right. or any, yeah, or anything. Um, and, and really, I came for um, the global financial crisis hit Ireland pretty hard mm. and um, came over really more for a new life and, and a hope at sort of... Um, yeah, staying ahead of the staying ahead of the game as opposed to in Ireland, you know, it was pretty drastic at that time for you for especially young people around my age. Um, yeah, and I thought it'd be kind of a year long thing, and then I'd be home, and then um, yeah, Facebook memories reminded me today it's nearly seven years, which is wow, <laughs> yeah, pretty incredible because I really didn't think I'd be here longer than a year. <laughs> So I had no notions of what to expect at all. I had never travelled in Australia, hadn't yet, had never been here. So you've got to tell us about your beloved Bedford bus that you're there yeah. sitting in now. Yeah. Um, well, I I was looking uh, for a way to um, 
I, I had decided to put myself forward and record an album and I decided to do crowdfunding and then I was trying to think of the most sustainable way to do that with a family and something in my head kind of just clicked and I was like I need to buy a bus <laughs> <laughs> and as I said that out loud a really dear friend of mine Sarah Carroll was sitting next to me who's also an incredible musician and mother and she was like I have a friend that has a bus and and um, this happens to be the boss that was her friend's boss. And um, uh. and I rang him first and I said, uh, oh, Sarah said, do you have a bus for sale? And I'm looking for a bus. And he was like, uh, I don't think you want my bus. It's like 1966 and there's no power steering and you'll have to go get a truck license because it's a big bus. And I was like, yeah, but she says it has tazzy oak floors in it. And, and he was like, yeah, it does. I was like, no, I want that bus. I don't want any other bus. <laughs> So, um, yeah, so then the fit out of the bus and everything came after that and the adventure began, really. <laughs> so the idea of recording on the road came before the bus or after the, you got the bus? No, because I had decided to buy the bus. I didn't have the bus in my possession yet now, though, but I had decided to buy the bus. And I um, at that stage, uh, I knew I wasn't going to go into a studio, you know, at the thought of a pressure cooker like for six mm. days you know that sort of it wasn't the way I wanted the music to come out so um, I was looking for kind of a more organic way to do it and with all the way technology works and recording is so portable these days I knew that there was another way and, and originally we were uh, my engineer and producer we were looking at renting a house somewhere and using that as a base for a couple of weeks and popping in and out to do the recording but then um I rang him up and I said, what about we use the bus? And he thought I was completely stone mad at first. <laughs> and then a couple of days later, he called me back and he said, yeah, but if we do it, we have to go to the desert. And I said, all right. I had never been uh, anywhere but on the coast in Australia. So I was like, this is great, great adventure <laughs> and get to record the album. And then what unfolded was, you know, a really... Um, yeah, a re really beautiful journey, like both as a road trip and also as a journey for the album because that shaped so much of um, the sound of the album and the writing and uh, all the events that happened on the road. It just made this beautiful, um, yeah, beautiful journey. So were all the songs written before you took off or did, were some actually born on the road? Yeah, some were born on the road. I did have sort of 10 to 12 that we had earmarked for the album so we knew we had enough material but then when we were on the road you know um uh, one or two songs didn't quite fit the theme sort of of the album was evolving and changing and um so we kind of went back and looked at some other material that i have and and then a few events you know like we broke down for example we broke down on the um on the Udna Dada track and uh, we hadn't seen a car for like nine hours at this stage and um, I had I'm like a really positive person 99.9% .9 of the time but at this one moment I thought oh like that's it we're all gonna die in the desert <laughs> <laughs> the sun will come up tomorrow and we'll be gone like and so as we we finally got the bus going and fixed it, and um, I don't know how, by some grace or miracle, because I'm no mechanic, but um, we got it going and we, we uh, continued on to William Creek. And on the track between William Creek and um, where we had broken down, I wrote um, Light Our Way. <laughs> um, to what extent do you think the, the environment in which you were recording uh, influenced the, the end result of uh, how the songs turned out compared to maybe how you originally envisaged them? Yeah, um, I think hugely. I think actually there's a lot of space, um, like physical space in a lot of the songs that, that weren't possibly there before. And just being out in in such vast space uh, led itself to that. So, um, you know, I we have a few tracks that are, you know, quite produced and have a lot of instruments on it, but there's a good few tracks that are really... Um, spacious and and have have left room for just little bits of color or flavor or um, yeah and 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 that definitely evolved the sound of it evolved when we were um, out on the road you know it it was in my head it was a lot more traditionally folk 
before we left. <laughs> and it was a lot more rooted, in, uh, I suppose, in Irish tradition. But um, but because I'm out here and I'm taking in all, all the surrounds here and I'm working with musicians that are Australian, like it, it actually gathered a lot more um, of the Australian uh sound to me than I than I ever thought or expected would, would be in there you know and you videoed the whole recording process too which brings a whole new dimension t- to the project and, and people can purchase the album with the DVD component did you have that in yeah. mind at the very beginning or was that uh, an idea that just sprang to mind during the process yeah it was an idea literally a week before we left someone um, actually uh, someone that that is a, a does PR um, and was a friend not even anyone we were hiring or using had just said to us like you'd be absolutely daft not to record the whole thing Mm. and um, yeah and I'm really 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 happy that we did because um, uh, it made for yeah it kind of you know sometimes when when you go through like amazing and beautiful experiences you know you like because you don't have a cameraman on you all the time in life (laughs) (laughs) but you can sort of um take from it what you will and and not necessarily remember it as accurately or as as um as intact as it probably was and it's beautiful to be able to look back on um that time which was um which is huge personal growth for me and musical growth for me and and also just um the coming together of four people on a bus to like achieve something you know like yeah. <laughs> we were just you know uh like some some strangers i sort of knew everybody through somebody and and mark who recorded it i knew well but you know and and to put four people onto a bus and you know that you have to achieve something was just um a really lovely experience to have record, recorded and um and you know i think it also gives people you know people that um take the time to watch it and have listened to the album you know it gives them more of a um a feel for the songs and the places where they were recorded and and sort of the connection between ireland and australia which is uniquely what i do so um so yeah, it kind of places people in the story a bit more, and then they mm-hmm. feel like a lot of people that have come to shows and have watched it. Like they, you know, they, I remember I was in New South Wales recently, and someone came up to me and they're like, "Oh, can I just hug you? Because I actually think I already know you from the DVD." <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, "Yeah, it's really nice to be able to give that along with yeah. um, music, you know." Have you sat and pondered how you think the album may have turned out had you recorded in the more traditional sense? Um, yeah, definitely. I mean, I, I think I wouldn't have been as open and free with it all, definitely. You know, I would have probably stuck to my guns maybe about preconceived, like, notions, but, um, because when we actually didn't plan the road trip at all, like, all we knew was that we were leaving Melbourne and that we would like to get to Cooperpedia at some stage <laughs> <laughs> and that we needed to get back in nine days. Like, that was it. And, and so we had to really, um, let go of all our preconceived notions about what the road trip was going to be, where we were staying, who we were staying with, um, where we'd record. Everything every day was left completely to the universe to catch us, you know. And um, because we did that with our actual physical selves and and our journey and, you know, the planning was just really left to um, generous people that we met along the way or people telling us, hey, you should go check this thing out. Um, and, and, and when you actually let life take you like that, um, which we did, all of us, for those nine days, um, you can't but let that affect the rest of your life, you know, which definitely was part of the recording journey for me. I probably had, you know, set ideas on what I thought it was going to sound like or how I should sing or how I should do this, but then because every day was like just let up to the universe i suppose i did the exact same with the music um you know and i've sort of had that complete ethos since recording which has led to some amazing adventures in my life (laughs) (laughs) 
So yeah, it was the start of something really good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I wouldn't go back and, and record it any other way than we did. No yeah. way. <laughs> yeah. Did you question yourself at any time along the journey as to whether this was the right way to go? Um, yeah, of course, when we broke down, yeah. I thought, oh, Anya, you're mad, you've brought all these people out to the desert, and you know, um, but then, you know, and we arrived at night that night, and the ho- because it's a 1966 bus, of course, like, nothing is sealed, and you know, I'm sure a- any Australian would know what red dust does to things, but, uh, like, the whole bus was covered, the, all the recording equipment, pillows, clothes, and I just looked at this like red bomb that had gone off inside like what was my home, you know, mm. and I was like, what have I done, you know, but then dusted it off and um, met these lovely people and they just gave us a room for the day to record in and then it was just kind of like, you know, that's actually life, isn't it? Like, you, yeah. like you, you know, you get some really bad stuff happens you feel like all your chips are down and everything's about to go pear-shaped and then a little bit of light comes in and you dust yourself off and you keep going so um so yeah definitely just like you know anything in life you you have to stop and think that's the worst thing i've ever done and then something shines a little light and you think oh no there was a reason for this yeah. <laughs> just keep going you know <laughs> literally dust yourself off in your case yeah yeah literally <laughs> <laughs> your kids went on the adventure with you of course as a mum what do you hope they took out of the whole experience um they do go on all my adventures with me but the recording adventure they actually didn't because oh, okay because we were going to have, they were going to have to be quiet basically for like 90% of their day because we were <laughs> recording. And that's not an easy task to ask no. kids. <laughs> yeah. But they, they loved um, following the adventure and they loved, you know, um, everything since. So we've got to obviously reap the rewards by going to amazing festivals and, and, and tours and amazing venues that all came from that little trip, you know. So the dual role of uh, travelling musician and mum, that's something that you've taken to like a Dr. Water? Yeah, it's, it's, a, um, it's, a, it's an adventure in both senses every day, but it's a beautiful thing to, um, to be able to share your work life experience with your family. You know, they don't have to sit in childcare or after school cares or, um, or do you know mundane things on screens to keep them entertained yeah. you know, they're out living life and um you know they're spirited and and they 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 love the adventure as well which is a lovely thing to be able to to give to them you know it is yeah absolutely yeah. you recorded in some abandoned mines uh, what were the acoustics like in there Oh, it was incredible. Yeah. yeah, really incredible. We didn't want to leave there, actually. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, just beautiful, um, beautiful acoustics and, and a beautiful feel and just, yeah, nothing that I've ever seen before, you know. Like, And, and next to the mines, there was, a, in Cooperpedia, a lot of people live underground, and there was a full underground house, and, you know, it was just incredible to see such uh, such different ways. <laughs> <laughs> now the big question is uh, album number two. How are you? How are you yes. going? How are you going to top that? <laughs> I know we have been thinking about flying to the moon, but that's, <laughs> <laughs> that's um, yeah. We're working on an EP at the moment, so we're trying to do album EP then mm. an album, um, which gives me a little bit more time to uh, to get the magical adventure together again. But yeah, there'll be no. Um, There'll be no going into a studio and doing it that way. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah it'll have to be another journey of some sort. But yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, it's it's set the it's set the bar pretty high. It now. has, hasn't it? Uh, I believe you've had some some mentorship to a degree from both Claire Bowditch and uh, Shane Howard. Yes, yeah, I was lucky enough to cross paths with um, with both of them very early on in my um, in my start to making music. And, um, yeah, both absolutely divine and supportive, um, souls who have, who have traveled the journey before and who, um, you know, are willing to share and, and guide and, and give some really good advice for along the way. And, um, yeah, I'm very lucky 
to call them friends. <laughs> <laughs> Shane was also involved in uh, the finishing touches of the album too, wasn't he? Yeah, we brought the um, album down to um, just outside of Port Ferry, a lovely little hall called Crosley, which um, I had been at before for an Irish music weekend that kind of got together a lot of the traditional Irish music players in Australia which you know is a quite small selective (laughs) crew of people Um, so uh, I had been down there before and it it was really um, really incredible just the area itself is just you know stone walls like Ireland and Irish flags places and Mm. and people that look like they belong back at home and the lands landscape and even the potato farming and it's just like you know incredible so when um when we were looking for a place to finish the recording i really wanted to have that feeling of home um without being able to fly back to ireland to complete it (laughs) (laughs) because we had this really australian outback experience and i really needed a sense of who i was and a sense of home to sort of put the final touches on it um and then i uh, happened to be down that way again and and up in crosley hall and i just thought well this is it you know um my ancestors you know like the my ancestors ancestors or whoever have 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 come and built this hall as well you know there's the, the it's such like a um a, a hall straight out of ireland and and you know, the, I'm the people that stayed in Ireland, you know, but the, these are the people that left, and so they're still part of my story in a way, you know, and the Irish story that continues. And um, yeah, so it was beautiful. And Shane is very connected to that story as well. Like his family are all um, uh, Irish background, and so it was lovely to be able to share that. And we invited over a few other traditional Irish players um, to join in the final bits of recording which really um really just actually brought the album like back together for me you know and we put a little hidden hidden track at the end with um some traditional irish music on it and that was just you know the little icing on the cake for me (laughs) (laughs) now when you're not trekking around in your bedford home for you is down on the beautiful ballerine peninsula which is uh, just a wonderful part of the world and there's a terrific uh, community of musicians down that way what do you think it is about the area that seems to attract so many great musicians and creative types. Um, I think you've got the great access to Melbourne, and and then you've got the beach. There. Yeah. <laughs> so, so it's a um, it's a beautiful uh, yeah it's a beautiful contrast, and um, and still be able to keep doing what you're doing, and and have beautiful family time and uh, community down there is definitely very strong. Mm. I saw you come up with a very novel way of putting together a music video, which uh, I think you're working on at the moment, aren't you, for Blank White Sheet? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's been another epic journey. I don't do things by halves anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we've gathered footage from um, uh, all over the world, actually, now at this stage. I thought just a few people would kind of submit stuff, but it's been lovely to see my nana had a lovely phrase she was from Galway and and it was what's for you won't pass you by and so like in the good times and the bad times it's kind of one that my cousins and I and my family and my sisters we're always like you know when things go well or if they go um to hell then we're always like oh what's for you won't pass you by you know and um and that's a lyric in the song blank white sheet and it's one people just like really took to so we ended up for my um crowdfunding for the album I ended up doing up little brace little cuffs little bracelets with the phrase on it and they sold out like you know straight away off the um off the possible campaign and then I ordered another 50 and they sold out straight away and we just ordered another 50 and the last tour they they were gone as well so like really around the world there's like 150 of these little cuffs on people's hands with my nana's phrase on it Mm. Um, which is really lovely so and a lot of those people um, came forward then when we asked them to just lip sync along to the song with the cuff they came forward and um, have added their little bits into the um, into the recording which has been just lovely so we're, we're, we're in the final stages of having collected all these bits of footage from all around the world and putting it together into a little clip Oh, beautiful. We'll look forward to seeing the finished product there and, yeah. and also look forward to the uh, next EP when it, uh, yes. when it arrives. 
Anya, thank you so much for your time. Absolute pleasure to, to, to meet you and catch up with you. Well, um, you congratulations on a wonderful first album, and uh, we look forward to hearing and seeing the next adventure. Great stuff. Thanks. All the best. Cheers. Cheers.